Hello, I'm Michelle Paver and welcome to my special bonus overtime catch up edition live. I think I got that right. So I've got a lot of questions to get through because you've been brilliant. You've all been sending through amazing questions. Warning, um, most of this is about Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, otherwise known as the Wolf Brother series. I think we've got one question about gods and warriors. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to pitch in. Uh, but just before I start, just to remind you that the best way to ask questions uh, is to go to my website, michellepaver.com, and click on Ask Michelle. Um, we think we now have an option. If you would like to actually have a live chat with me and ask a, f a question, uh, we think we can do that. So perhaps you could include that in your comment or your question if you go to my website. Um, and just a couple of other reminders before I start. Um, remember that Thin Air Remix video competition? That details also on the, uh, the website. Um, way beyond my technical capabilities, but not beyond yours, I'm sure. And some fabulous prizes to be won. And of course, that's in honor of the publication of the Thin Air paperback, uh, which comes out on the 5th of October. So now, enough waffling. I'm going to get on with the first few questions. Now, I've grouped them in by subject. The first little lot um, are about a possible movie for Wolf Brother. And I'll read the questions first and then I'll give you the answer because they're all roughly about the same. The first one is from Marie. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking me on the most amazing literary journey I've ever been on. Thank you very much, Marie. Um, I've just finished Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I'm absolutely amazed. I read that back in 2013, the movie rights were sold. You're right about that. Are there any updates? Uh, when will we see a Wolf Brother adaptation? Um, yes, the movie rights were sold. More about that in a minute. Here's one from Anna. Um, I was simply wondering about the Wolf Brother film. Last I knew the film rights had been bought by Fox. Yes, she's right about that. That was in 2013, I think. Um, actually, no, it was earlier than that, um, the Fox deal. And a script had even been in the works. What happened to it when it was abandoned? Will we ever get the film? And we've got another one from Fergus. Uh, just wondering if there's any possibility of a film adaptation, as this is my favourite series. Actually, Fergus, you didn't mention what the series was, but I'm assuming it's the Wolf Brother series. Um, we then got one from Anna. I love your Wolf Brothers. Uh, wondering, are they a movie? Or are they, is a movie coming? Uh, and have you written something now? I'll deal with that bit, Anna a little bit later towards the end of the programme, but I will be dealing with the question of sequels. And finally, on films, we've got Joshua. Um, I'm reading Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I'm on the third book, and I'm loving them so far. Do you think they will ever become movies? I don't think it could live up to the potential of the books. I sort of agree with you there, Joshua, but it would be great to see. Um, so now I will deal, just moving away, chucking those aside, I will deal with the question. Yes, I've done a few film deals on Wolf Brother in the past. I mean, the first one, I think, was in 20, 2003, before some of you were born. Um, that was with Fox. That eventually petered out. Um, we went our separate ways. Then we, I did another deal. You know, that went for quite a distance and then came to an end. The trouble with film deals is, you know, films are, are very expensive. These books would be hugely expensive because it would all be filmed outside in forests. The wolf would be really difficult to, to computer generate because you can't train wolves to be act actors. So it would cost a lot of money, difficult books to adapt. So the, the short answer is not at the moment have I got a film deal or a film in, in progress, but I hope that in time there might be one. That's all I can say. What I can say is that You'll hear it first on MP Live or on my website. So, you know, stay tuned, but don't hold your breath. So moving right along, I've now got a great big wodge of questions, really some quite interesting ones. Um, some of them just comments, which is also really nice, uh, all about different aspects of Chronicles, uh, the Wolf Brother books. Um, so in Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, this is from Addy. Um, where, this is an interesting one. Where did the animal clans come from? Now, she's encountered them in Shaman by Kim Stanley Robinson. Um, and in that book, their structure was different. Um, they seem to be an important, clans associated with different animals seem to be an important part in the cultures of both books. And the question is, did your idea come from researching historical or contemporary hunter-gatherer societies? Great question, um, Addy. Um, actually, it didn't come from historical research because we really don't know what stone age people believed i mean we know that they 
buried their dead with weapons and goods to possibly take them to the afterlife, but we don't know what they believed. So I had to make it up basically, but I didn't just take it out of my head. I looked at more recent hunter-gatherer societies. I'm sure you know some people still live in the traditional ways. Um, and so I had to look at um, the Inuit, for example, some traditional Inuit cultures, uh, Aborigines, um, that is indigenous Australians. I looked at, particularly, I looked at for the clans, the what they call the First Nations of the Pacific Northwest, which is the sort of top left-hand corner of America, if you like, um, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, they have seal clans, eagle clans, um, wolf clans, and um, I, I was up there a couple of years ago doing some research, and I got a lot of the beliefs or ideas for the beliefs in Torax world from them, but then I sort of tweaked them um, to fit the story. Now, you, you've... Um, I think somebody else later on asks about references for books, and I'll talk about that later, but that's the basic idea. Um, that's where I got the ideas from. Uh, Max, now, what inspired you to write Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, uh, and how long did it take to finish it? How old were you when you wrote it, and where did you write it? Well, what inspired me, I'm going to have to keep that short because I've got a lot of questions to go through. Um, suffice it to say that when I was a child, I was really keen on wolves and the Stone Age, and then when I grew up, I had a very scary encounter with a large bear. And if you want to find out about the bear, I suggest you go to my website and you should be able to find the story of the bear. I tell that in quite a lot of detail. Um, that's kind of what inspired it. A lot of different things from my childhood and then later on came together. Um, how long did it take to finish? Well, it took about five or six years to write. Very, very busy, but enormously fun five or six years. I was about, I think I, I was trying to work this out, I was about 43 when I started and I was about 49, pushing 50 when I finished. Um, where did I write it? In Wimbledon, um, in the house I no longer live in, which is sort of a little house down the hill with buses thundering past. It's quite on quite a busy road uh, and in a very crowded study. That's where I wrote Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. Now, moving on, we've got Lawrence here. Oh, yes, this is an interesting one, Lawrence. Why did you choose the idea of Torek being so young? Because, Lawrence, he walked into my head age 12. That's what happens with characters sometimes. You know, you can't actually choose it. Some part of my brain just suggested him as a young boy, age 12. Perhaps because when I was 12, I, well, I remember being 12 very vividly. Um, and I wanted a wolf. I wanted to live in the Stone Age. So maybe that's why. Now we have one from Addy again. I don't know if it's the same Addy. Um, I loved Chronicles growing up. Uh, as an aspiring young writer with limited resources, are there any good ways for me to start researching ancient hunter-gatherer societies? Do you have any books or articles you could recommend? Yeah, now this is this is difficult. I don't know how young you are, Addy. Um, the, the books, I had a quick look at my bookshelf, and the books I've got are mostly uh, quite academic, uh, grown-up books. So apologies, I can give you the, the main ones that I used. Um, they're not archaeological, they're just about sort of how traditional people think and believe. Uh, the first one is The Mind in the Cave um, by Professor David Lewis Williams. That is pretty academic, but it's a really good read. The other one, which is a little bit more accessible, I don't know if it's still in print, is something called The Spirits of the Snow or Spirits of the Snow. It's in the Time Life series. It's about the Inuit, but it's a very, very useful book. So Spirits of the Snow, if you can get hold of the copy. Uh, two big, hefty academic tomes, but really useful. It's a very famous book called The Golden Bough, B-O-U-G-H, by Sir James Fraser. The original book was 22 volumes, and there's a sort of one-volume version. That's got lots and lots of examples of how traditional people live. Um, so it's an oldish book, but it's got lots of examples. And then there's another one called Shamanism, which is a very hefty book by somebody called Mercia Eliade. I don't know how to pronounce his name. E-L-I-A-D-E, -E, Shamanism. So sorry if those are a bit academic, but apart from that, I would just look online about Inuit 
um, Aborigines, uh, Pacific Northwest First Nations, and you'd probably the Sami people in in Northern Lapland. You'd probably get a lot of ideas. Moving on to Stephen Ford now. Um, ah, yes, I'm kind of confused, says Stephen, about the sense of time in Wolf Brother. Torak describes some people as a summer older than him. Is this a year and a moon, a day? Could you clarify how a day, week, and year is described in the series? Well, a summer, when they refer to a summer or a winter, what they really mean is a year. Um, so a day is a day. <laughs> uh, a moon is actually a month. You may not have noticed, but moons go from, our moon doesn't just stay the same. It starts off and it's dark and then it gets bigger and bigger and then it ends up being a full moon and then it starts to wane. And that takes roughly a month. So a moon in Torak speak is a month. And they don't bother about weeks. They just don't bother about weeks. It's uh, not something they're concerned about. So good question. And remember, um, just to remind you, if if you want to ask a question, just go to my website or make a comment, post a comment, go to my website uh, and click on Michelle Paver. Sorry, the website is michellepaver.com. Click on Ask Michelle. Um, now, moving on, we've got Jason here. Yeah. Now, this is a very specific question, which I've never been asked before. Um, in Spirit Walker, Torek had to, in, in, sorry, he says in the Spirit Walker series, but I think you mean the Wolf Brother series. Anyway, Torek had to keep the boar tusks as punishment by the people of the deep forest. You're quite right. that I think it was the forest horse told him he had to keep the, the tusks of the boar that he'd killed. However, in Soul Eater, uh, Jason says he gave them away to the white fox mage, a kumik, uh, to offer to the wind. She, she wasn't a mage, I don't think. But yes, he did. He gave them to her to offer to the wind. I might be wrong about that bit, Jason. Uh, how can he offer something like that to the wind when he was supposed to keep them as a punishment? Well, that's a really good question, Jason. Um, but, you know, the reason is that it was just the forest horse people telling him that he had to keep these tusks. And we all know from reading Oathbreaker, if we've read Oathbreaker, that the deep forest clans have some pretty weird beliefs and they're, they're very dogmatic. They're saying, this is the way we do things. You must do things this way. Like, for example, they, 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 they feel that you must wake up fire by rubbing sticks together. You can't possibly use a strike fire and, and flint the way Torak's people do. So they have these rules. That doesn't mean Torak has to keep to them. So when he's up in the far north, he decides that he makes that decision that the obligation to thank the wind is rather more important than keeping the forest horse clan happy. So that's what that's what he does. Um, but that's a, a great question. Thank you for that, Jason. Um, here's one from Jet. Just a lovely comment, actually. I love Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm really glad. Here's another one from Jake. Um, I was about to start rereading the series for what feels like the third or fourth time, and I just wanted to write and tell you what an amazing author you are. Sorry, guys, for reading this out, but I couldn't resist. Um, I've always loved these books. And as you can probably tell, I can't get enough of them. Thank you for doing the work you do. And I hope to see similar books by someone in the future. Well, so do I, if I write them. Um, thank you very much for that. Here's one from Ashley. Um, what was your childhood like? And did it help you to become the writer you are today? Interesting. Um, I had a really happy childhood, actually. Uh, I was the middle. I am the middle of two of three sisters. I have a younger, much younger sister and then an older sister. Uh, we did squabble a bit, but, you know, it was, it was fine. Um, and I think the great thing about my mother is that she let me be bored and just find things to do, and she didn't interfere. She just let things happen. Um, I was allowed to get rid of my bed and sleep on the floor if I wanted to. I was allowed to dig up the front lawn and plant all sorts of weird medicinal herbs, try them out on my little sister, as long as I didn't poison her. Uh, she let My mother let me try stuff. And my father used to buy the most amazing books. And that really helped. We had a lot of books in the house. And I think that, above all, is what made me a writer. I'm just going to see if I can put these questions down. I'll just show you a couple. I think I've showed you this one before, but um, I'll have to watch the microphone, but this is um, once long ago. You can see it's falling to bits. It's a, it's a wonderful book my dad gave me when I was about five, 
with books with stories from all around the world um including one about a boy and a wolf and it's um it's brilliant and the other book wait a minute chuck that on the spare bed the other one which i think i've talked about but never shown you this is an amazing book wait there we are yes um it was published in Czechoslovakia in 1960, the year I was born, and it's all about the Stone Age. It was written by an archaeologist, but it's got amazing pictures, and they made a big impression on me. Um, they're sort of accurate pictures of possibly what Stone Age people would have looked like. Here's one from a, a little bit earlier than Vincedin's time, but and it doesn't look like Vincedin, but I just wanted to show you. Wait a minute. Can you see? yeah i don't know i'm not doing very well with that because i keep yes there we are there we are there we are now that's not finn kedin at all that's from an earlier time but you can see that he's a real human being he's not just you know a gorilla or something and that made a big impression on me those sort of pictures and that's those sort of books made a huge impression on me um, i could go on about that for ages but i'm going to have to pick up the rest of my questions and carry on but having lots of books in the house that really helped make me the writer i am now another one from ashley this may be a different ashley um have you ever made an impact on the world or donated to charity well as for making an impact on the world i think i'm going to leave that for you ashley to decide um i might have done a little bit but i writing these books, otherwise I probably wouldn't be talking to you, but I'm going to leave you to decide that one. Donated to charity, yes, I've given to quite a lot of charities since I was um, since I was about a teenager, I think. Um, but the most relevant one here is uh, the UK Wolf Conservation Trust. I've been giving to that one and still do for, well, since before I wrote Wolf Brother, so it's quite a long time ago. Another one from Ashley. Uh, Michelle, I need to ask you a question. Can you please try to respond as, as fast as possible? Well, you probably know by now, Ashley. No, I'm not very fast at that sort of thing. Um, but you're doing a biography on me and you need to know how I made an impact on the world. Again, you better decide that one, Ashley. Um, Ella, here we are, Ella. Uh, another one doing a presentation about me. Well, just for future reference, guys, if you're doing a presentation or homework on me, don't rely on me to answer your questions. Look at things up on, on the internet um, or in my books. You'll find quite a lot of detail uh, in my books as well. Um, but anyway, you wondered if I can tell you about you, about me. That's answered that bit. What do you do when you're not working on a book? And where do you get your inspiration from? Well, where do I get my inspiration from? I haven't a clue, really. Ideas just come into my head. Um, you know, it might be something I see or think about when I'm walking in the forest, but I don't really know. The brain is a mysterious place. Um, I've referred somebody else to the story of how I got the idea for Wolf Brother and the, the bear, meeting the bear in the forest. That little story is on the website. But, you know, why do these things come and when? Who knows? What do I do when I'm not working on a book? <laughs> Well, I'm mostly working on a book, actually, um, Ella. Um, so if I'm not working on a book, I might be reading someone else's book. I might go for a walk and think about the book I'm writing. Um, that's mostly what I do. But I wouldn't want it any other way. Now, this is Amelia. I hope I've got your name right. One of the rare people who asks about Gods and Warriors, my, my Bronze Age series. Will there ever be a mini sequel for the lives of Pyrrha, Hylas, Issy, Havoc and Echo? Not sure, Emilia. I don't think so. I haven't got any plans at the moment, um, but never say never. Oh, and here's another one from Emilia. It might be the same one. I'm among many fans of your works at my school, and I was wondering if at all you did school visits or school presentations. Um, well, the answer is I used to, Amelia. Um, I used to do a lot of them, perhaps too many, and I got very tired and I'm not getting any younger. So I tend to do these Skype things more uh, because I've got a very busy time at the moment. So I haven't got any plans, but, you know, that could well change as and when another book comes out. But not for the moment, except the odd one or two. Uh, now we have one from Bella. Um, wait a minute, I'm just going to chuck these on the floor so I don't start reading them again. Uh, Bella, here we are. Yes, now. I finished, I've got to be careful of this one because there's a spoiler in it. Um, I finished Ghost Hunter 
um, and with it, the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness today. This is a little while ago. I love the series, especially Wolf and Torak, who, like you said, stayed on your mind as I went about my business during the day. It was a good feeling of companionship, it seems, with the characters. Oh, that's beautifully put, Bella. Now, since my memories of Ghost Hunter are still fresh in my mind, my question is, and don't listen to this bit if you don't, if the, there's a spoiler here, guys, if you haven't read Ghost Hunter. Um, how did you decide that, I'm not going to read the name, but, <clears throat> excuse me, a certain wolf cub was to die instead of the others in the pack? Um, and she goes on, the fact is that, you know, this particular cub is female and she was, and you were partial to her, Bella. Um, anyway, thank you for a great series and the memories of the characters will stay with me. Um, well, I can tell you, I had to think about that. And the fact that the cub is female had no part in the decision to kill her off. I'll tell you what it was. Um, at the UK Wolf Conservation Trust, um, a good few years ago now, about eight years ago, they, they brought in some new cubs, a group of little wolf cubs who, who'd been brought in from another wolf sanctuary. There were four of them. One of them they named Torak in honour of my Torak, and that was wonderful. And I went to meet these cubs, which was brilliant because I was just writing Outcast at the time, so I really needed to get some wolf cubs and meet them. And I said there were four of them. Um, three of them are still alive today, but there was one little cub called Miko who was always a bit smaller and not very sure of herself. And she ended up, we, they found that she had a broken leg. Uh, her mother had trodden her by mistake and she was never very well. And so in the end, she had to be put to sleep. And it was sad and haunting, this little, poor little cub who you know had a bit of a bad start in life um, and had been looked after as well as she possibly could be towards the end. And so I think that was in my mind when I decided which cub was going to be killed. So there we are. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, now we move on to more cheery things. Hattie, here we are, Hattie. Um, how did you come up with all the names for your characters? Uh, and again, I'm assuming we're talking Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. Um, in terms of gods and warriors, you know, that's a little bit simpler because there are, you know, lists of Greek, ancient Greek, um, uh, and Minoan names, and so I was able to find those. But for Chronicles, that was tricky because there are no Stone Age, there's no Stone Age writing, so we don't know what they called each other. We know they had language, but we don't know what they, they called each other. Because Chronicles is set in Northwest Europe, in Northern mm -hmm. Scandinavia, I did use some Norse names. That's um, Old Norse, that's the language the Vikings spoke, excuse me. <coughs> I'm not even going to attempt to mute this thing, otherwise I'll, I'll screw up the entire computer. Um, I used some old Norse, Norse names and sort of changed them. So Seon and Horde, Eostra and Thiasi, for example, those are, those are old Norse names. Finkedin, I made up. I'm very proud of that one. I made up a lot of them, including Tarak and Ren. Or rather, I thought I made them up. I mean, I used names from, uh, bits of names from um, other languages and, you know, Inuit and that sort of thing. And when I, with Torek in particular, when I went up to um, Greenland on a, on a trip, research trip, I'd already written Wolf Brother and my Inuit guide, very nice girl, said, oh, Torek, that means something in my language. And I thought, oh, crikey, <laughs> it's not anything embarrassing because I've already written the book. And she said it means perfect, which I thought was fantastic. I mean, Torak isn't perfect, but that was great. Um, Wolf actually was the hardest. I mean, I, I did just have to make it up. but And I made up all sorts of weird names, and then I realised he's just Wolf. But it took about three days to find that out. Moving on now, we have quite a long one from Alex, which is a delight to read, but I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um out loud but he's 18 now and he was writing about you know you've been through the mill alec alex haven't you um because you know you're just basically describing the, the, the three series which you really loved which got you through what sounds like a pretty tough time um of exams and all the rest of it um and then you decided to reread chronicles but you know what if the books weren't as good as you remembered um i know what that's like half an hour later i love this bit i was 
I was reading chapter three and my mum was knocking on my door asking me why I hadn't brought my laundry basket out yet. <laughs> that made me laugh. Um, and it's it's fantastic. I'll be reading the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness through again starting tonight and I'll buy Dark Matter to read later on. But I was wondering, and this is his point, now that I have been roped back into reading, I'm glad to hear it. What hidden gems would you recommend for people my age? And this is a heartfelt plea. I want something with excitement, daring and heroes I can feel invest in. The books from school weren't like that. This I find heartbreaking, Alex. Instead of battles between good and evil, there are important life lessons to learn. Oh, God, I know that sort of thing. I need something that lets me detach from reality, not something like the Grapes of Wrath or the Scarlet Letter that will only painfully remind me of the boring world I'm living in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with no, not casting aspersions on John Steinbeck or, or um, Hawthorne, I know what you mean, Alex. I feel your pain. I have looked at my bookshelves. Um, this is a tricky one because I, yeah, excitement, daring, and heroes I can feel invested in. Um, I, there must be loads of brilliant modern series out there which I just don't know about, so I can't tell you about them. Um, I've come up with a, three suggestions for you, Alex. The first one, um, which you've probably read. You must you must have read, I would have thought, but maybe you haven't. And that is The Lord of the Rings. That's my copy of The Fellowship of the Ring. Um, sorry, I'm not doing well, very well with holding them up. But if you haven't read it, Alex, um, I do urge you to try. Um, it does get very heroic after a few chapters. And certainly when I was your age, 18, I mean, it completely and utterly got me for years. So um, that's all I can say about that one. What about the others? Um, there is a book called The Master and Margarita. Now, that's my copy, The Master and Margarita by someone called Mikhail Bulgakov. It's it's not exactly heroic, but it's a, it's a very strange, wild, funny book, unlike anything you'll ever read again. Um, please don't be put off when I say it's set in Soviet Russia in the sort of early 1930s, in Stalin's Russia. That's the kind of grey background, because then what happens is the devil comes to Moscow, along with the giant walking cat and some serious violence, which is also very funny in the first chapter. And we just head off from there. And I read it when I was about your age. And it was everything I needed because I was very unhappy at your age and I needed colour and escapism and something quite black and amazing and no wretched life lessons. So try that, The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. And then something just way off beam, but the books of Raymond Chandler. Um, he wrote thrillers. Um, he's the original, you know, um, very, very hard-boiled private detective, but they are incredibly well written. I read them last year and I just couldn't stop because I was so invested in the character. Um, Philip Marlowe, The Big Sleep, Lady in the Lake, The Little Sister. They're, they're very, very readable. And um, anyway, that's what I, that's my suggestion, um, Alex, and, and I hope you know that it, those suggestions don't come too late. Now, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're doing very well, scorching through. Um, keep the questions coming. Uh, best way is go to my website, michellepaver.com, and click on uh, Ask. Um, and there's also that really good remix competition, Thin Air remix competition, um, details on the website. And that, of course, is to celebrate the, uh, the publication of the Thin Air paperback coming in in October. Um, but moving on with questions now. Uh, we've got a little a couple more before we move on to the, the big question, which is the sequel. Um, there's a whole clump of questions on that. But here's one from Jaden, um, which kind of segues, segues into the question of sequels. Why did you stop writing in the Chronicle of Ancient Darkness series? I love the book. I love the books. I read the first book in a day. I am so delighted by that, Jaden. You know, it took me um, months and months, nearly a year to write that book, but the aim was for people to read it in a day. So I'm delighted to hear that. Why did I stop writing them? I stopped writing them because I thought I'd reached the end of the story. Um, you know, stories have a shape and I'd always planned it as a six book series. I knew where I was going to get to with Torak and Ren and Wolf 
and I think I gave them a pretty good send off. Um, that's why I stopped writing. Um, and I just, I don't think I've, I don't think we'll be posting this one on on the screen because I didn't tell my wonderful agent who's at the control center to do it. But I'm just going to go back, just mention again, uh, Carolina uh, Dedler's question um, that I'd mentioned at the end of um, the last Michelle Paver live, uh, which was she'd asked what happened with Vin Kedin after the last book, and is there any or will there be any other book which takes place in that world? Um, so, Carolina, I'm, I'm going to be talking about that now. I mean, in terms of Vin Kedin, <laughs> well, you'll only find out about him if I ever write another book. Um, but let's move on. I've got this little clutch of questions, because this is the question that you keep asking, um, which is lovely of you, all of you. Um, I'll... I'll just read the questions first and then I'll sort of deal with the, the, the question of sequels to Chronicles. Um, now, I hope I've got your name right. It's Nia Pitkinen, uh, Nea or Nea. Um, I, I know you're Finnish. She's only 11 years old. And, and this is an amazing email in English. Thank you for lighting up or lightening up my life with your books. I'm 11 years old from Finland who speaks amazing English. And I've just finished my last book in Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I want more. Please, can you write some more? Or can you perhaps recommend some of your other books with similar content? Well, the only other books really which are similar are Gods and Warriors. That's my series set in the Bronze Age. It's a few thousand years later than Torak. Um, but I don't think they're published in Finnish. You might be able to read them in English, though, because your English is amazing there. Uh, moving on, Barry um, has a lovely comment. Um, Hi, Michelle, my 12-year-old daughter adores your books. Problem is, she's read them all. When is your next book due, and can you tell us what it is about? Well, uh, my next book, uh, apart from the Thin Air paperback, which comes out in, that's an adult ghost story, is a gothic story set in Suffolk. So um, I don't know when that's coming out. I suspect that's not what you mean, Barry, though. Um, and so listen on till the next bit, and then I'll be talking about sequels. Uh, Julia, uh, Julia, perhaps I should say. Hello, I'm a huge fan of your books. I'm wondering if there's a movie. Well, we've talked about that. Um, and if the next series of books will be about antiquity, since the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness was about prehistory and Gods and Warriors was about the Bronze Age. Um, yeah, I think I will be. If if I write a series, I think I can tell you that it will be about antiquity. But I'm not going to tell you which bit. <laughs> um, Elliot, uh, I was just wondering if you could possibly start an opening for uh, uh, start an opening book for what happens after Torak and Ren go off together, say with a new evil, but still with the same characters as Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I just want to say your books are phenomenal. Well, thank you for that, um, Elliot. Nice idea, and I'll be coming onto that in a minute. Oliver, um, hello, Michelle. I've read all parts of Wolf Brother, and I wonder if you can do more parts of the book. I just love the book, and I can't find anything. I can't think about anything else. That's lovely. Thank you, Oliver. Um, again, somebody else who can really write well. He's from Sweden. Tala, oh, Michelle, I've just finished Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I am now shocked. Your books are awesome. I'm not going to read all of this praise. It's too embarrassing, but please make us a new series. Please, Torak, Ren, Wolf, and the other characters are awesome. And I'm not going to read that bit because it's a spoiler. Oh, please make a new series for Torak, Ren, the pack, and the clans. Uh, they're literally one of the, your favorite books ever. Please make us a new series for Torak. You're very persuasive. Um, Finn, Finn Lewis, are you going to write more books like the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness? And then we have two long questions to finish before I finally get to the answer. Don't worry, I will answer. Um, S Sylvie Leggett, who I think is Sylvie. I'm, I'm not sure if that's French, but she's 15. Um, yes, she, she. we met, apparently, um, went in a signing queue. And, ah, yes, you've never forgotten the axe head. Perhaps you mean this axe head <laughs> that I had on the desk as I was signing your book, Sylvie. Yep, I've still got it. It's, still lives on my desk um and i won't read the whole thing because it's a lovely long uh comment but it really it's lovely and it explains she explains very well about how she loved wolves and she was pleased to find some a book like mine which was accurate about wolves and you've been to the um uh uk wolf conservation trust uh you're also a budding author and you've asked for tips um i haven't got time here sylvie to go into that but 
I would refer you to my previous um, MP live, which went out, went live on the 4th of September. Uh, that's the one that is, I talk about writing about animals, but I think I also answer a question and, and deal with writer's tips in quite a lot of detail. Um, so good luck with that. Uh, yes. Now, she, she goes into the effect of the characters on her. And this this is brilliantly put. So I, I will just read this bit. Um, I read constantly and, and in other books where the focus moves to the next generation, I've almost often stopped reading the series because I just find it so hard to move on, on from the characters that I know and love. They feel part of the story and without them, it's simply not the same. I was wondering what you thought about this. Do you feel the same? Or would you ever write a book about a new set of characters? in Torex world. Am I crazy to get so attached? Um, first of all, no, you're not crazy. You're just very imaginative. And yes, I've felt the same about these books and also about other books, particularly The Lord of the Rings. You're not, as I said, you're not crazy. You're just, you, you've got a very highly developed ability to get into a book. That's a real talent and a skill, which you have developed, Sylvie, over years of reading. And you're lucky because that won't go away and you've got it now. So that's something you'll have for life and it'll help you tremendously. So congratulations. Uh, and I have it too. Um, I suspect most of the people who've posted in questions have it as well. Um, now, as all your fans, I would adore a seventh book, but I completely understand if you feel you left the characters where they needed to be. That's very understanding of you. Um, you have the soul of a writer. If you did write another, I would hope it to be about Wolf and Co. Interesting. And there's a nice picture she's posted as well. Um, and finally, Ryan. Yes. So that, yes, look at that gorgeous picture that Sylvie posted. That's really lovely, actually. Thank you for that. Um, finally, Ryan. Um, hello, Michelle. I don't know if you remember me. Of course I do, Ryan. I, Ryan is is one of my greatest fans. I'm meeting you Um well, you were a, a young boy when we first met when Torak was a cub uh, in, I think it was Waterstones somewhere on Piccadilly or Oxford Street, I forget where, and then again at the Wolf Trust. And Ryan has his own website, Empire of Books, and has posted lovely things about my other books. Um, you've, you've been through a lot, Ryan. I'm sorry to hear that. And rereading Chronicles has really helped me. I'm glad of that. Any help I can give. Um, and I, again, it's 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 a longish one, but um, you've just you're asking. My only question for this live cast is: so you have any idea when we will know when it's coming out, um, and what is coming out? So so that's a that's a, a clever question, Ryan. My bookshelves, I love this bit, are calling for new paver magic. <laughs> you're so persuasive. All the very best, and I hope to meet you again in an event soon. Um, so I can show you in person my very own Soul Eater tattoo. That is really out there. And yes, I'm not joking. I actually have one, um, Ryan says. So, um, yeah. So to deal with that question first, when will we know um, when, what's coming out and when? Um, well, as I said, the, the, the book I'm currently writing is, is a gothic story set in Suffolk. I don't know when that'll come out in a year or so. After that, what am I going to write? Um, I don't know yet, but you'll find out probably sometime next year when I start vaguely talking about it. But now I have to deal with this question of, of the sequel. Um, and I know I've answered that question in the past, but perhaps I can be a little more specific now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to write a sequel to Chronicles of Ancient Darkness. I've always said this, and I still say that. Um, I've also said that the characters feel as though they've never quite left me. And that's true. So if I get a really good idea, then I would love to write another sequel. But I can be a little bit more specific because a lot of you have mentioned the characters, Tarak and Ren and Wolf and Finkedin. And I agree with you. Um, those are the things that make me want to go back to Tarak's world. So what I can tell you, and I'm sorry for not being specific or anything, is that this, if I ever decide to go back into Torax world, the story I write will be not a sequel, uh, sorry, a prequel, you know, not Finn Kedin's story or Far's story, and it won't be the next generation, it won't be son of Ren and Torak and daughter or whatever, 
It won't be the kids. It would be Torak, Ren, Wolf, Finn Kedin, Dark, and the other characters uh, that I love and I think some of you love too. So that's a promise. If I go back into that world, it will be with those characters. If. That's all I can say. I think now I've been wittering on for far too long, but do keep those questions coming. As I say, the best way to ask them is to uh, click, go onto my website, michellepaver.com, and then click on Ask Michelle. And there is, I think now, potential for, if you'd like, to talk to me live on another Michelle Paver Live. Um, mention that in your question, and it'll, it'll be logged by my wonderful agent, and we'll try to do something about that. Don't forget also the uh, Thin Air Remix, Remix contest, um, which is details of which are also on my website. That's all I can say about it because I don't understand how on earth you're going to do it, but good luck. And of course, that's to celebrate the Thin Air paperback, which comes out on the 5th of October. So that brings me to an end of the bonus overtime catch-up edition, um, which was necessitated because of all your great questions, mostly about Chronicles. So thank you for your enthusiasm. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And in two to three weeks, I'll be doing another Michelle Paver Live. And as I think some of you know, the topic, the special topic will be writing about the natural world. And I'll also then be answering loads of questions. Um, so thanks very much. Uh, goodbye from me and happy reading. <laughs>